Good evening and welcome. Uh, I am so glad to be here, and I am so glad to welcome all of you to worship at the United Methodist Church of Livonia. Here we are. It's Christmas Eve, and we've been through uh, four weeks preparing for this. You know, wherever we are on this night, we are at the meeting place of heaven and earth. Tonight, our homes are the stable in which God keeps his appointment to meet his people. No matter where we gather, we do so as the people of God. Not all are holy, not all innocent children, not many worldly wise, and not all familiar faces. But if tonight only strangers met, that would be enough. For Bethlehem was not the hub of the universe, nor the stable a platform for famous people. In an out-of-the-way place... Which, God, which people never thought to visit, there God kept and keeps his promise. There God sends his son. Join me in the, this opening prayer. O oh, holy God, you have called us to celebration. And we have come tonight to hear the story of shepherds and magi, of maiden and carpenter, of prophets and angels, and we come too for blessing. You are born in our hearts because you have chosen the weakness of our bodies for your birth. We are filled with love because you have taken upon yourself our humanity. We are filled with hope because you have offered us your spirit. We are filled with faith because every day things become holy on this night. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit that we may hear and rejoice in the gospel of our Savior's birth told in story and song this night. May the light of each character illumine our understanding of the role each of us has in God's ongoing creation. Amen. Hear the words of the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born to us a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. Let 
Said the king to the people everywhere, listen to what I say, pray for peace people everywhere, listen to what I say, the child, the child. Watching and waiting are an ever-present part of life. We wait for summer vacation or to be old enough to wear makeup or to get a driver's license, and we wait for babies to be born. Using the time to prepare our hearts and our minds leaves us better prepared to receive the blessing that comes when the waiting is over. The words of Isaiah prepare us to watch for the presence of Christ, not only at the one time in history, but in the world now. God sent the angel Gabriel to the Galilean village of Nazareth to a young woman engaged to be married to a man descended from King David. His name was Joseph and the woman's name Mary. Upon entering, Gabriel greeted her. Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. She was confused, wondering what the angel meant. But Gabriel assured her, saying, Mary, you have nothing to fear. God has a surprise for you. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and his name shall be Jesus. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am not yet married? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come to you, and the power of the Most High will hover over you. Thus the child you bear will be called Holy Son of God. Then Mary said, Here I am. Let it be with me just as you say. Mary makes a huge decision in this passage, a decision to risk social ostracism to do as the angel asks. I've always been impressed that she only questioned and objected once, yet look how ready she is. In the Bible, angels always seem to have to say, do not be afraid when they visit someone. Just their appearance frightens people. But here the angel greets her and she answers, here I am to the angel. May Mary's preparedness to be, an, exa be a, an example to us when we open ourselves to the light of God.
When Mary and Joseph were engaged, but before they lived together, Mary was found to be pregnant. Joseph, being a righteous man who did not want to embarrass her, planned to leave her quietly. But before he could do this, an angel appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for her pregnancy is from God. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus. He will save his people from their sins. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. While we often call Mary blessed for her role in the nativity story, Joseph is a little-known character. What do we know of him? We know he was a man who was faithful, despite the gossip and Herod's threats. He listened to angels and he nurtured the Christ child. Yet he never knew the end of the story, dying before Jesus began his adult ministry. We too cannot always see where our own stories are heading. May Joseph's example of faithfulness assure us of the importance of our own work in bringing God's kingdom. Sure, he must have been surprised at where this road had taken him. Cause never in a million lives would he have dreamed of Bethlehem. And standing at the manger, he saw with his own message from the angel come to life and Joseph said why me I'm just a simple man of dream why him with all the rulers in the world why him inside the stable filled with hay why her She's just an ordinary girl. Now I'm not one to second guess what angels have to say. But this is such a strange way to save the world. To think of how it could have been. There would have been no Bethlehem, no lonely shepherds at his birth. But Joseph knew the reason love had to reach so far. And as he held the Savior in his arms, he must have thought, why me? Just a simple man of dream, why him with all the rulers in the world? Why him beside the stable filled with pain? Why her? She's just an ordinary girl. such a strange way to save the world. Now I'm not one to second guess what angels have to say. But this is such a strange way Such a strange way.
In those days, a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus that all of the world should be counted in a census. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from Nazareth to Bethlehem to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for him there in the inn. A three-year-old girl ran to her mother saying, Mom, God's my size. She'd been lying on her stomach looking at the family crash beneath the tree. At Christmas, God is newborn, not our adult version of theological sophistication, but instead a dependent child needing care and love. Christmas tells us that it's all right to lie on the floor, eye level with a baby, listening for the wisdom that comes from a God that is our size. The animals were the first admirer of Jesus. How right they were to remind us that God is interested in more than just humankind, but instead is interested in all creation. It's a useful Christmas lesson to remind us that God so loved the world. Jesus, a brother kind. Was humbly born in a stable of wood And the friendly beast around him stood Jesus our brother, kind and good I said the donkey shaggy and brown I carried his mother uphill and down. I carried her safely to Bethlehem town. I said the donkey, shaggy and brown. I made to go there. 
gave him my head to pillow his head. I said the book. region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly where there was a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth. Peace to all. Join me now in this uh, litany. They have heard it on the hills. They have heard it in the streets. The rumor prevails and none can contradict it. Some are looking up the prophets, some are studying the skies, others speculate or calculate, but none deny the facts. Some are dancing back to sheepfolds, some are traveling foreign roads, some await more information, others celebrate the news. In a foreign place, a ruler has imposed a new tax. In a hilly place, an old woman nourishes her new son. In a royal place, an old ruler senses a new threat. In a busy place, a young couple copes with their new child. At what seems the wrong time, in what seems the wrong place, among those who seem the wrong people, God has decided to bless, disturb, and visit us.
When the angels had left them, the shepherds said one to another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they hurried and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what they had been told about the child, and all who heard it were amazed. Sometimes after the angels leave, it can be hard to believe that we've had a divine visitation. Everyday reality intrudes. It's easy to believe the shepherds questioning whether their strange vision was a result of a too spicy dinner or a little bit too much wine. Yet, they went to the child, these rough, rugged people used to hard work. It's our response to the divine message that we are blessed, just as it was for the shepherds. And how fitting that the shepherds should be there since we call Jesus the Good Shepherd. I've heard about this baby boy who's come to earth to bring us joy and I just want to sing this song to you it goes like this the fourth the fifth the minor fall the major lift with every breath I'm singing hallelujah 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah. A couple came to Bethlehem, expecting child. They searched the inn to find a place for you were coming soon. Was no room for them to stay, so in a manger filled with hay, God's only Son was born. Oh, hallelujah! 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 Shepherds left their flocks by night to see this baby wrapped in light. Most of the angels led them all to you. It was just as the angels said, you'll find him in a major bed, Emmanuel and Savior. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Stars shone bright up in the east To Bethlehem the wise men three Came many miles and journeyed long for you And to the place at which you were there Frankincense and golden myrrh They gave to you and cried out hallelujah Hallelujah, hallelujah Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I know you came to rescue me. Baby boy would grow to be a man and one day die for me and you. My sins would drive the nails in you. That rugged cross was my cross too. Still every breath you drew was hallelujah. 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 In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born, wise men from the east came asking, Where is this child who has come to be born king of the Jews? For we saw his star rising and have come to pay him homage. When Herod heard this, he inquired of the wise men where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem. Then Herod sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go worship him. The wise men set out following the star until it stopped over the place where the child was. On entering the stable, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and worshiped him. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Then, having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another way. During the Christmas shopping season, merchants put up their attractive displays to draw our attention to their products. Much of our December is spent in places of brightness and glitter and hurrying crowds. Yet look at where the star stopped, over a quiet, still, out-of-the-way stable. Perhaps that is the mark of the modern wise one, being able to recognize that star amidst the distractions. For where that star shines is the light of our faith. You know, in so many ways, we are like the characters in the Christmas story. We hear God's message in a variety of ways. We make faith decisions about our responses. We stand in awe at the manger, and we bring our gifts to honor the Christ child. I would ask at the end of this service that you use our electronic giving platforms uh, to make your uh, offering tonight. At the completion of the service, a post will go up on Facebook that will help uh, you to do this. You can go to our website, umcl.us, or use the Give Plus app. And remember that our offering on this night goes to fund the pastor's fund, that fund that we use throughout the year to support the people in our community. We three kings of Orient are Bearing gifts we traverse afar Field and fountain, moor and mountain Following yonder
Join me. In the face of the gospel, let us ask God for a good Christmas. That no powerful nation should tax the poor or uproot them. That no unmarried mother should be put away in disgrace. That no door will be shut on those who need to find it open. That shepherds and sheep, all of nature, need not be afraid. That barbed wire and angry soldiers may not be found in Bethlehem. That wise men and women might appeal in Tehran and North and South Korea and Washington. That children be protected from those who abuse them. That this Christmas, worship may be, become a manger and the church a stable and the rumor become a reality that Christ has come among us. This, this we, we pray, pray in, in Jesus' name. name. Amen. Amen. The God who said, let there be light, has caused light to shine in our hearts. That light is the glory of God reflected in the face of Jesus Christ. As our candles are a sea of light lit from the one candle, so may the church reflect Christ's light and love in this world. One, two, three, four. the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare His room. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature Savior reigns. Let all their songs employ. While fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains, repeat the sounding of joy. Repeat the sounding of joy. Repeat, repeat the sound.
Now we light the candles that represent your place in the ongoing story. And as we light these candles here and sing Silent Night, I invite you to light your candles at home too. And I even challenge you at to take your candle out to your front porch and let your light shine for all the world to see. Carry the light of Christ in your heart now and always. And go in peace. God is with you. And a blessed Christmas. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Christmas. Let your heart be light. From now on, our troubles will be out of sight. 
Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Make the Yuletide gay. From now on, our troubles will be miles away. Happy golden days of yore. Faithful friends who are dear to us, gather near to us once more. Through the years we all will be together. If our God allows, hang the shining star upon the highest bough, and have yourself a merry little Christmas now. Happy golden days of your faithful friends who are dear to us, gather near to us once more. The years we all will be together. Oh, God.